In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get open source models working with Autogen. It's really easy, it turns out. And you can basically get any model you want working with it in minutes. The hardest part is actually figuring out which model is gonna work well and then adjusting the prompt template to get the agents to actually do what you want them to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's go. The first and only thing you need is LM Studio. And LM Studio, I had never heard of. And it's absolutely incredible. It allows you to download any open source model and run it on Windows or Mac. And it's really fast. It comes with its own chat interface. You can run inference on it. You can spin up a server. And that last part, the server, is what we're going to use to power Autogen. So come to lmstudio.ai and download whichever version you need, either Mac or Windows. I've downloaded both and I've gotten it to work on both, but I'm gonna use Mac today because that's what I'm recording this video on. Once you download LM Studio, install it, and this is what you're gonna be greeted with. Right here, you can actually just search for any model that you want. So we're gonna be using Mistral. I hit enter and it lists all the different versions of Mistral that are being hosted on Hugging Face. So the specific one we're gonna be using is this this one right here, which is actually a new and noteworthy model, Mistral 7B Instruct version 0.1. And like I said, test different open source models and figure out which one works best for Autogen for your use case. All right, and right here we have the blokes version and we can see how many downloads, how many hearts. So we click on that and then we can see all the quantized versions. Now I usually use the Q5, but there's no reason you can't use a larger version. The Q5 works really well on my MacBook Pro M2 Max, like very, very fast. And so once you click here, you're gonna come over here and you can just click download. The download will take a few minutes. I'll show you what that looks like. And so let's say I wanted to download the Q6 version. I come here and I just click download. Then I click here and you can actually see the download progress. It is so easy. I'm so glad I found LM Studio. Not only that, but it has the chat interface built into it. Here are all your settings that you can use, prompt format, everything you need to run these models locally. This is by far the easiest way that I've found so far. But what we need to do is actually set up a server. So over here, we're gonna click this little local server button. And then all we do is at the top, if you don't already have it selected, make sure you select the model you wanna use and then click start server. That's it. So now we have a server running. And now the next thing that we need to do is actually connect Autogen to this server rather than using ChatGPT. So I have the example loaded up that I used last time. I've already imported Autogen. I've set up the config list, the LLM config, the assistant settings. This is all stuff that I've done in a previous video. If you wanna see that video, I'll link it in the description below. So what we actually need to change is within this config list. The AI type we're gonna keep as open AI. The nice thing about LM Studio is it exposes an API that is exactly the same as ChatGPT's API. So you don't need to change anything. Then for the API base, we're gonna point it at our local server. So localhost colon 1234 slash V1. And then the API key is null because we don't need an API key. And that's literally it. That's everything you need to do. Let me show you now. So for this, I'm saying the assistant agent, you are a coder specializing in Python. Okay, so that's the assistant. Then for the user proxy here, my settings. Everything's the same. Down here as the task, I'm going to say write a Python method to output numbers 1 to 100. And again, everything's basically the same. I come up here to the top right, I click play. And if I switch back to LM Studio, I can actually see the inference happening right here. There it is. So I pause the inference, but as we can see, if I scroll up, there is the inference right there. It's actually happening and I get all the logs, I get all the output. And then if I switch back here, I can see the actual assistant, two user proxy, two assistant, and they go back and forth. Now again, I mentioned at the beginning, the key thing to figure out and the thing that I'm still working on is to figure out what changes I need to make to make this work as well as GPT-4. Because right now it kind of gets messed up in parts. Sometimes it doesn't terminate when I think it should. I think a lot of it has to do with the prompt template, but that's it. You have it up and running now and completely local, completely free, completely open source. So let me know what you build with it. I'm gonna keep working on this and trying to get it to work better. As soon as I figure out more, I'll publish another video. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.